Hi there, I'm Vicki Steves, your data science librarian and your librarian for research data management and reproducibility. In this video, I'm going to show you how to access the data sets that the library collects on your behalf so that you can use them in your data science work. I'm going to do a deep dive into one of those resources, in particular the Seek data set, to show you how to get to its API and how you can use that in your work. Here is the library's homepage found at library.nyu.edu. So the first way that you can get to our library's resources is by clicking this uh, articles and databases, actually. Um, you'll notice that there's a lot of stuff going on here, including our chat window, which I'll just say you can ask us questions on that pretty much any time and we will get back to you. But you'll notice right in between the chat and the rest of the list are these content specific sources. You can see here like we have access to temporarily extended materials through our partnership with organizations like the Hadi Trust. We also have audio music collections, uh, but for us, we are going to take a look at our data sources. So when I click this, it will bring me to an A through Z list of all the data sources that the library licenses. We have other data sources that we collect that are freely and openly available, which I will also show you, but these are the ones that we have collected for your use. Some of these have restrictions uh, imposed on us by vendors so that we can comply with their terms. So those might include having like a librarian make an account for you to access one of these data sources. For some of our data, there are some ethical concerns. And so we also might have to do some extra remediation for you to have access to those data sets, particularly our political science and social science based ones that have human participants. Um, so you might find that not all of these data sources are like you click on it and you immediately get to it. And some of that is by design for ethical reasons. Some of that is imposed on us by vendors. Um, you'll notice, however, next to some of our data sources here, there might be extra documentation. So like if I clicked this for ad spender, you will find that, oh, look, here is a step-by-step -step guide made by someone in the libraries to help us understand how to get data out of ad spender. So these icons can be really helpful just for you to navigate different things. So here's like a little question mark. If you hover over it, there are special access instructions. To access a specific database, you have to log in. For best results, for instance, you should create a free personal account. So we try to guide you along the way so that you can make uh, special use of these data sources. Some of these, for instance, have this DS, which means it's particularly supported by my department, data services. So these will um, means that you can email us about these particularly. We can help you with some specific resources. They also, some of these have a little YouTube icon for some video instructions. So as you can see, there's just lots of ways to, uh, and some of these come from colleagues at other, other university libraries. So we try to add documentation next to the uh, relevant data sources as much as possible. Some of these, for instance, if you hover, it contains open access content about COVID-19 by a vendor gift. So this is one of our temporarily expended, uh, expanded articles. Um, not all of these will be in English because we support Abu Dhabi and Shanghai as well as a global campus. So you will find things, for instance, in English and Russian for our historical statistics. Um, some of these you'll also find like extra documentation from the vendor and uh, more information about like how to make accounts to discover data, things like that. So this is one way that you can sort of browse and look through and you can see underneath you will always find the instructions to get you to where you need to be. So within this interface, you can also filter by different subjects. You can filter by specific publishers. Um, so the one that I was particularly interested in showing you was our seek data set. Seek Data provides some economic resources on uh, emerging and developed markets by e economists. You can uh, get an API key for this and interact with the data in a Jupyter Notebook, which is really interesting, I think, for a lot of us in data science. I'm not going to show you it right now. That's a little preview, but that is just one way to get to it. So again, you filter by data sources. You can look by subject. You can go A through Z. And if you are did not find the data you need or you're having trouble accessing it, just pop us a message in this chat box. We will uh, be more than happy to help you with that. 
another great what another great resource is our virtual business library so we got a lot of inquiries about specifically like economic and finance information and a lot of that is collated here uh, and it's done by our business and government document librarians so you can see them all here in this nice video presentation about the resource they have some more news like oh we just got a lexus nexus rest api for text mining that's great so you see that right on the home page there's a new uh, survey data available in the package we subscribe to called Statista. Um, you can access our Bloomberg terminals remotely now, which is huge. Um, but in any event, after you sort of look through the news and updates and you're interested in finding data, all you do is click into some of these categories and uh, it will have a similar uh, interface to what we saw before. So you can see some of the same icons, some of the same instructions, some of these again have restrictions from the vendor like NYU users can only download a thousand records per month from GuideStar, which may limit uh, how you can use it or not. Others um, just require net ID and password. So we all have that at NYU. You can go through different like industries, through different uh, types of economics and statistics. Like here's that seek data again, which I'm really excited to show you. Um, they have uh, stuff based on different countries and different industries, like here's one just for Europe, Eurostat, there's India stat. So there's lots of different resources uh, available listed out at our virtual business library, a lot of which are data sources. Of course, they also have like pu uh, interesting publications, videos, ebooks, case studies, things like that. But for us, these top ones here, these top five, these are typically data sources that will be very useful for you uh, as you're if you're looking for economic data for your data science work. Another resource is found at geo.nyu.edu and it is our spatial data repository. So this is maintained and run by some folks in my department data services and it is a discovery portal specific for our uh, geospatial information. So you'll notice that we have uh, data from lots of different types of institutions because we actually share metadata with them. So it's, it's nice that way. You can look again by subject like we saw everywhere else. But what's also interesting is that you can actually do things like zoom out and uh, search like, let's say I want to go over to my hometown. We can go on the North Shore of Massachusetts. This looks like it will encapsulate my hometown. I don't see it on the map there. It's a little too small. But if I click search here, like, oh, Ipswich is next door. So that's cool. I can see some Ipswich data. Um, so I'm actually searching based on the map here, which is really interesting and really, I think, nice because it lets me focus in on a specific area. You can look at different format or access types. So you would probably want the public. If you hit restricted, restricted you'll have to log in with your NYU net ID and password. Um, but for our public data science work, we will probably want these public data sets. Of course, you can filter by year, uh, by different collection, place, subject, publisher. Um, so you can do a lot of those things you might expect to find elsewhere as well. So yeah, this is our spatial data repository. You can also submit your spatial data here if you would like. So you can also feel free, if you have geospatial data you've collected, to contribute to this repository as well. We're more than happy to work with you on that. So if I click into a data set, you'll see here I can export it as a GeoTIFF. Um, it looks like it's some historic data. What's it from 1985? That makes sense. Um, and it's, yeah, really interesting. So I can also get it through different web services. Like if I click this, I can uh, get it through a few different, I can get the layers through, it looks like Harvard's uh, web mapping service, which is very neat. Can also email it to somebody too. So if I want to email it to myself, I just click the email button. So that is our spatial data repository, which is again your place for geospatial data. So in this video, I've shown you our big A through Z list of all the data sources we collect, all the different icons and what they mean and how to get help. I've also showed you our virtual business library, which narrows that in for business data, and our spatial data repository, which narrows that down for spatial information. Now let's do a deep dive into that seek data set that I've been mentioning so that you can see uh, one instance of how to get an API key to use a data set that we've collected at the library here for your data science work. So, all right, I'm back at our 
arch here. I'm clicking into data sources and I'm just going to go publishers seek data because there's only one. When I click on this, I will be redirected. You can see there's a little proxy nyu.edu. I have to log in with Shibboleth. I already did that. So that's why it's redirecting me, but otherwise you will have to log in. You can log in as a guest because we at NYU have collected it. You don't have to be a registered user. However, to get access to the API, you need to be a registered user. So that's why you can click register now. Um, that's why you can see my account information over here. So when I click login, it's authorizing me. You see this nice little proxy library.nyu.edu up here. That is very important if that's not in your URL bar. Um, I'm not sure how you're accessing it, <laughs> but it should be. It automatically pops up the new notifications. Fine, thank you. Um, and you can see this is what the Seek data set looks like. So if I am interested in like world trends, world economic trends, I can look at different forecasts. I can look at different models. I can look at aggregates. There's so much data in this data set. It's so rich. Um, so if I wanted to look at just like the whole world aggregate for uh, foreign trade, I can dig down, I can nest and nest and nest and nest. And here I finally got one. When I click it, it shows me some of the data. It shows me those big um, broad insights from the data, like it's down 75%. It shows me the raw data as well as the statistics that Seek themselves has generated for us. So this is all cool. So once you've sort of explored the data a bit, um, the next thing we'd wanna do is explore like in a Jupyter notebook and mess with it ourselves because that is what makes it so interesting for us as data scientists. So uh, Mr. Biggie Steves is here. I clicked on the little V at the top corner and you'll notice all the way down here at the very bottom right above sign out is API access. So when I click that, I can generate a new key because I have, have an API key for this. When I click that, I just copy it. So now I'm copied to the clipboard. I can put that right in my Jupyter notebook and get access to the uh, Seek data set. But what's more important is that they have a help button and they have a help button that helps you navigate how to use the API in things like Excel. There's an Excel add-on. Uh, it looks like it's only for a few different, for Windows only, um, which isn't good for me because I'm on Linux. So I won't be using that. There's just the straight up API that's supported using SDKs. So that's all right. Um, I might do that if it's my last resort. I like R, so I might use R2. They have a, looks like an R library for the seek. And look at that, they already pre-filled that it comes from this proxy library.edu for me. So that's really nice. I can copy and paste this, install it and work with the API that way. And look, they have a quick start guide and they have the same for Python. So they give you the exact pip installed to copy paste, to put it at the top of your Jupyter notebook to install in your local environment. You can do this uh, also from within a Kaggle notebook if you just add an exclamation point before pip. You can look at their quick start guide. And so this is a nice piece of documentation that walks you through how to log in, how to get your detailed search all from a Python interface. So we load in our notebook, we log in, uh, we can use the API key as well. Um, they show you specifically how to do things with Spider and from lots of different interfaces too. Here's one, and they give you actual code examples to follow. So I really like that Seek's API is so well documented and has so many different ways to interact with it. Python, R, Excel, straight up SDK, whatever you want. Uh, so you can notice again, you in, when after you log into Seek in this top corner, at the very, very bottom, Seek API access. And that's how you get your key. That's how you get help. And that's how you can access how to get it right from Python. The library has other data sets that offer API access for you. Like I mentioned the LexisNexis we saw in the virtual business libraries guide earlier. Uh, and if you're interested in working with any of those data sets, similar sort of help exists and you can hit me up or any of my colleagues in the library via that chat service and we will get you the help you need to get you the data you need. So feel free to, again, take advantage of all the data the library collects for your data science work uh, and let us know how we can help you facilitate that.